Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischl. This is going to be episode 174 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 1-3 deep stack game at Sarasota, Florida, the one I Jacks Poker Club. Before I get in the hands, I will be streaming my Club GG this Monday, approximately 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Anyone who has any interest in playing with me specifically on stream and is not necessarily in the Florida area, this would be a great opportunity to mix it up in some friendly micro stakes. It should be a lot of fun. Anyone who has any interest in this game, please message me on Instagram or Telegram. And with that out of the way, let's roll the tape. We start out at the 1-3 deep stack table. We buy in for $500, even though there's a 1,000 max on, before the first hand of note. Under the gun raised to $15. There's one caller. I look down at pocket queens. Definitely going to go for a raise. Not going to just call it pocket queens. When I make it $65, both players fold pretty quickly. So we get no additional money, but it's a good confidence builder to win the first hand you play. I win another small one before I look down at ace, king, off suit, both red. With one limp and I'm on the button, I make it $16 before the big blind raises to $60. I could just get in the $500 stack here, but this is an opponent with most of his 3 betting range. He's just going to call and I'm going to be flipping at best. I think my position gives me an advantage in the hand. Gives me some extra avenues to maneuver based on certain runouts, so... I choose to just call. We end up going heads up to a flop, which comes 7-4-3 with two diamonds. My opponent continues for $65. I do expect this opponent to see about with ace-queen, ace-jack, all of his ace-x holdings, which I'm beating. So we're not going to fold to just one bet, especially if we can just spike an ace or a king on the turn and have the best hand almost always. So for the $65, I make the call. And the turn is the six of diamonds. So now three diamonds on board, four liner, any five is a straight. My opponent checks to me. I know both my cards are red after I check at the end of the hand. It turns out I have the king of diamonds. So knowing I have either the nut flush draw, second nut flush draw, I think I want to bet here when my opponent checks to me. I think tens plus are in kind of a weird spot. I could have made straights. I could have made flushes. I could have two pairs. I could have just two overs with a single diamond. I make it a point not to check my cards before I throw out this bet. Want it to look as likely that I just have two diamonds as possible. So I bet $75. Not sure exactly which flush I'm going for at this point. My opponent makes the call and the river is the three of hearts. So that card is quite bad. If my opponent had an over pair, he's probably going to call river because now he beats 6-7, 4-6. A variety of two pair holdings. Before I make my decision, I check my cards, and I have the king of diamonds. I like that in this spot. My opponent could have ace-jack, ace of diamonds, ace-queen, ace of diamonds. There are some draws that I'm actually beating here, so I check back, take my show on value. think I'm going to win some percentage of the time. Just not this time. My opponent has pocket jacks, both black, somewhat surprised that he does not even have a diamond in his holding, but jacks are going to be good enough to win this one. I get a little bit of redemption in a smaller, less notable pot before. I'm in the big blind with Queen Jack with the Queen of Hearts. It folds to the button. He bets $15. Small blind folds. I'm going to defend this one. Seems decent enough. And we end up going heads up to a flop, which comes 10, 8, 6, all hearts. Flop a gut shot to the nut straight. Queen high flush draw. Seems decent. I check to my opponent. Probably going to check raise this one. But he checks it back. Turn is the five of diamonds. He hasn't really shown any interest in the hand, so we're going to start betting right now. I bet $25. My opponent makes the call. The river is the ten of diamonds. There are some times where I'd give up here thinking that this card's better for my opponent. But I do think he would bet a single ten. At least some percentage of the time on the flop when it's checked to him. So thinking he can't be too strong, definitely need to fold out his ace and king high flush holdings i bet 55 dollars and this after a bit of thinking gets my opponent to fold all right so we get a bluff through that's decent before the next interesting hand i look down at king 10 off suit from the big blind with an under the gun limp small blind limps this hand could be raised pretty easily and often but i decide i want some stronger hands in my big blind just check defending range so i'm going to include this one we end up going three ways to a flop of queen jack eight with two clubs my hand severely under repped i have an open-ended straight draw i bet ten dollars technically an over pot size bet but it is what it is under the gun calls small blind folds so we're heads up to a turn card which is the four of spades still just king high so we're gonna go for an over bet again this time 35 dollars my opponent makes the call I guess he could have like queen jack, maybe just a random queen. 
maybe Jack 9, Jack 10, 10, 9, 10, 8 all make some sense here. So we're going to hopefully need some help on this river, which comes. We river the actual nuts with the ace of spades. And now we're going to size up here. He called two over bets. Maybe he'll call a third one. Maybe somehow this opponent has pocket eights or somehow 9, 10, which is slow played. I bet $110. My opponent shows me 9-7 of clubs before mucking, so he had a ton of outs as well. I happen to just get there. If I don't get there and I check and he bets, he probably just wins. So it is nice to river the nuts when you're bluffing two streets. Next hand of note. I'm in middle position with pocket 10s. Early position raises to $15. I'm going to 3 bet 10s. 10s is strong enough to go for bigger size pots, especially in position. So we're going to make it $55. Only the initial aggressor size to call, so we're going heads up to a flop, which comes queen, three, deuce with two hearts. I do have the ten of hearts, which is nice. There's only one over card, so we're going to go for a C bet. We do those aces, kings, queens, ace, queen, sometimes ace, king, although ace, king checks back sometimes, and tens is going to bet this time as well. I bet $50, thinking my opponent misses a lot of the times, and sometimes he might even peel with eights and nines, so a continuation bet I think is warranted with this hand. My opponent hymns and haws for a bit, but then folds. It is nice to win three bet pots when you don't even have top pair. Following that, I have king nine offsuit with two limps. I'm in the cutoff, definitely going to raise this one up. Hands definitely better than a lot of the limpers ranges, so I make it $20. The big blind and both limpers call, so we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes king high. On king eight, six with two clubs, we feel pretty good about it. It checks to me, I'm in position. I think a small bet here makes a lot of sense. My king has no kicker, basically, so I'm never really getting a worse king to call. So we want a size where an eight can call. Any two club is calling anyway, as well as nine, seven. So I bet $30. Only the player to my direct right decides to call. So we're going heads up to a turn card, which is the deuce of spades. Definitely a brick. My hand, is, I don't think it's strong enough to go for three streets. So I'm going to check turn. I would do this with a lot of my range. So I think this hand is one of the stronger hands that makes sense doing it. Going to be able to value bet the river pretty happily based on different river cards. And we're definitely able to when the river is the three of diamonds. Very, very safe. However, my opponent bets $38. Don't really think a raise can ever get called by worse, but definitely not folding. I pretty much snap call. I'll even show my hand first. I think it's good a lot of the time. My opponent just nods and says you're good and mucks. So that's a good one. The check on the turn definitely induced a bound the river. I'm not sure my opponent was strong enough to call a river bet. So I think this hand was played pretty well. Following that, I have pocket jacks in middle position. I raised to $15 after one limp. One late position player and the limper decides to call. So we end up going three ways to a flop, which comes queen, eight, seven with two clubs. Similarly to the last hand, one over card's not going to be enough for me not to bet. So I bet $20 with my pocket jacks. And my nemesis from the jacks versus ace king hand decides to raise to $65. Not really fully to one raise, feel pretty good about my hand. My opponent definitely has a queen sometimes, but he also has 9-10, any two clubs, maybe just an 8-9, seeing where he's at. Player's definitely capable of turning single pairs into bluffs, so we're calling this one. Turn is the 7 of spades. Not a particularly bad card, but my opponent seems to think so too, as he continues for $100. Not sure how often a queen would keep betting here, so I think I have to call... Get the vibe that my opponent's more likely to be on a draw. Even 5-6 might continue this way. So I make the call for $100. And the river is the queen of diamonds. Pretty good one. The, all the clubs miss. Less likely my opponent has a queen. I check. Expecting my opponent to give up at least some of the time with his misses. But he bets $125. I hate this spot because I'm kind of priced in the call here. I don't block 9, 10, 5, 6. I have no clubs. I think my hand's just a pure call here, especially when it's less likely my opponent has a queen now. I'm not even sure what he could be repping, honestly. If he had a full house, I expect him to absolutely bomb this like three or 400, as this player likes to go big when he has it. So the small bet makes me think there's some chance that I could even just be beating like an ace 8 that's going for extremely thin value. So I make the call, and my opponent has pocket 8s. Okay, that makes some sense, I guess. We lose a big one for the game for the table, but this one got me so mad. I was about to jump over the table like... Hey. 
somewhat self-inflicted. Theoretically, you could fold flop, turn, or river, but I guess I just wasn't in a folding mood on this one. But we'll have our chance to get revenge on this player with this one. We're in the big blind with King Jack offsuit. With two limps, the button makes it 20, I call. Both limpers call. We end up going four ways to a flop of queen, 10, three, all diamonds. So we flop open-ended, similarly to the ace-king hand. I think I have a diamond in my hand, although I'm not sure. I feel like it's better not to double-check your hand, because I think it looks like an obvious diamond check, whereas if you don't check, it's actually more likely you could just have a flopped flush. So I opt to not check or verify the, the exact suits of my cards. On the flop, it checks all the way around, which brings us to a turn, which comes the four of clubs. Now we're going to go for a bet here. Would love to thin the field. I know right now I just have king high, so going to go a little bit bigger, hopefully get a random 10 to fold. Maybe jack nine or smaller pocket pairs will just let it go, which would be a good pickup. But for the 65, my nemesis decides to call. The river gives us a straight. It is the nine of diamonds. On this one, it is clearly a mistake. I need to check my hand at this point. The only counterplay to that is I believe if I check my hand and I don't have a diamond, I'm just going to check this all day. And then my opponent has the green light to bluff with all of his holdings no matter what. So I opt to not check my cards, but check the hand. Check it over to my opponent who checks it back. He shows 7-4 of diamonds. I tell him I haven't looked at my exact suits and flip one card at a time. When the jack is of spades, I feel like I'm not going to have it. But the king is of diamonds. We have one of the best hands possible. And we end up scooping a hand. Could have won a lot more with a river bet. Could have lost some if my opponent decides to fast play his flush. But that is the beauty of poker. A lot of variables in every single poker hand. Next hand of note. I have queen jack of diamonds. With a button straddle, I raise to $15. Two middle position players plus the button decides to call. We are four ways to a flop of queen four deuce with two spades. Being the first to act massively multi-way, I think it's fine to check this hand, but sometimes you just gotta bet your top pair good kickers. So we're gonna bet small here, $25. Don't expect any spade draws to fold or meddling pocket pairs for this price. And for the $25, two players fold, but the button tags along. Turn is the jack of spades, so we turn two pair, but the obvious flush draw gets there. I think it's kind of a natural check card, see what my opponent wants to do. He decides to check it back. All right, I should have the best hand here pretty much always. The river is the six of diamonds. My opponent has approximately $150 in a stack, and I contemplate just jamming because I'm going to call a bet anyway, and this opponent's been kind of wild whether he has a flush or not. But I think that a better option is to go for a milky sizing and possibly pick off any jam that he decides to do. So I go for the $25 river bet, and then my opponent shoves his whole stack in. I won. I won. <laughs> yeah, I won. I won. Ah. I beat him in there at snap call, and he kind of hysterically just pushes his chips towards me. I definitely induced the bluff on this one. He says nothing, and when your opponent hands you the chips preemptively, I'm just going to show my hand, assuming it's good, and it indeed is. So win a decent-sized pop for a final hand of note. I'm in the big blind with ace-king. With two limps, the button raises to $15. The small blind calls, I'm going to raise this one. I make it 55. Happy to see a bigger size pot with ace king. But the button and the small blind fold. So we get another little small one in before we leave. We actually had to rebuy. So we're into the game for $1,000 out of the game for approximately $750, which is a $250 loss across five hours equates to $50 an hour or 16 big blinds an hour. Yeah, it's always disappointing to book a loss in any poker game, any stakes any video format specifically. On this day, if my ace king can crack pocket jacks, I would have a decent sized win. Additionally, if I just fold my pocket jacks when my opponent has flopped a set on me, at any point in the hand, I theoretically will have a good day. On that hand though, you really shouldn't fold just facing a single raise or even two bets. Because if you were to do that every single time, your opponents could just run over you with aggression. Sometimes you just have to defend your medium hands and see what develops. And your opponent's just going to have a better hand sometimes. Hopefully next time I can turn it around. If you have made it all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. I will see you on the next one.